Hey YouTube, it's ACU, and today I have a new unboxing for you guys. Now, since the 27-inch 5K IMAX release some time ago, it's long been suspected that Apple would refresh the smaller 21.5-inch iMac with a higher resolution display. We have that here, the 4K iMac with Retina display. <laughs> All right, and quickly, if you guys want a chance to win a brand new iPhone 6S, just be sure to rate this video up and stick around to the end. That giveaway is concluding soon. Now let's talk about this iMac briefly before we actually get into the unboxing. Now essentially, it does start at $1,499. That's $400 over the 1080p 21.5 inch variant. And interestingly enough, it has a one terabyte hard drive. That's at 5,400 RPM. So it is a slower hard drive. You can of course bump that up to a one or a two terabyte by Fusion Drive for an increase of $100 or $300 respectively. You can also go with 256 gigabytes of flash storage for $200 or 512 gigabytes of flash storage for an extra $500. So now that we have some of the pricing information out of the way, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the box. On the front, you'll notice it just displays the iMac itself. Both sides simply sport the Apple logo with some additional unique information over on the right hand side that we're not going to show. The other side simply has a different pro profile of the iMac, of course booted into OSL Capitan still, and the top has the tech specs, so let's get into this. Again, this is a 21.5 inch iMac with Retina 4K display, that's of course measuring diagonally, it has a 16 to 9 widescreen aspect ratio, it's LED backlit, again 4K with a resolution of 4096 by 2304, it has an ambient light sensor, is powered by a 3.1 gigahertz quad core Intel Core i5 CPU with turbo boost up to 3.6 gigahertz. It has 8GB of 1867 megahertz LPDDR3 RAM, a 1TB 5400 RPM regular hard drive non-fusion, an integrated Intel Iris Pro Graphic 6200, FaceTime HD camera, two Thunderbolt ports with high-speed I.O. that are backwards compatible with mini DisplayPort devices, an SD card reader, of course an Ethernet port, built-in stereo speakers, dual microphones, a headphone jack port, 802.11ac. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0. Of course, you'll also notice that this one does indeed come with the new Magic Keyboard and Apple Magic Mouse too. Now, like with past iMac boxes, Apple has included this convenient orange tab on the seal for this box. So without using my knife, we're going to unbox this just by pulling this tab. Okay, and lifting the lid, we're going to pull down the flap to reveal three pieces of styrofoam nicely protecting the iMac. And in the top, as always, we have this box here that says design by Apple in California, and we're just going to slide it like so to reveal the new Magic Keyboard right here, as well as the Magic Mouse 2 over on the right hand side. And in the middle, we have this little booklet that we can just pull out like so to reveal an Apple Lightning to USB cable to actually charge the new Magic Mouse and keyboard. And let's go ahead and open up this booklet now, and you'll notice that on the top we have an iMac Quick Start Guide and it just goes over some basic information regarding the computer as well as a Mac info sheet that's not really too important we can set that down two Apple logo stickers and a microfiber cleaning cloth for the display now let's quickly get back to the magic accessories before we actually return to the iMac so taking this cloth off of the mouse here you'll notice that this is a slightly different design at least on the bottom we do have improved tracks that provide better glideability when actually using the mouse on a desk and we also have this at the bottom this is actually a lightning port so let me go ahead and grab the cable really quick and I'll show you guys how you charge this by the way it's also how you initially connect the mouse to the computer so essentially all you need to do is just turn it on the same thing applies for the keyboard and then you just plug it in and while this may look a little weird because you definitely can't use the mouse while it's charging it only takes two minutes to give it nine hours of of charge and then after that it takes about two hours to charge it to full which Apple claims will last about a month possibly more depending on your usage so let's go ahead and set this off to the side and now back to the keyboard here so let's go ahead and take the plastic wrap protecting this one off 
All right, so this is also a different design than before. Gone are the AA batteries, so we no longer have that circular or cylinder bulge here toward the top. Instead, we just have this really nice wedge-like design. This is pretty much all aluminum here, and then on the back, we do have some plastic with some pads, one in each corner, so that way it doesn't slide around on your desk. Now, we also have the same power switch over here toward the top. It's in the top right-hand corner, and all you have to do, again, is just toggle that on and then plug the lightning USB cable in like so and that's also how you charge it. So now getting into the iMac let's go ahead and lift the top piece of styrofoam off. Now the left styrofoam bottom guard isn't interesting at all so we can go ahead and take that one off and spin it around and when we look at the right one you'll notice that we actually have the power cord conveniently and nicely tucked away. And now begins the iMac unwrapping portion of this video so to speak so let's go ahead and remove the cloth that's actually covering the display. And now only one thing remains before we can actually power this on. We need to take the plastic wrap covering the display off and now fully removing it. And we're just going to connect the power cord to the base of it like so. All right, it's now booting up. Let's go ahead and skip past this part until we're at the OS 10 setup screen. All right, so here we are. That was actually a pretty fast boot. We're at this animated graphics screen telling us to turn on the mouse as well as the keyboard. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, now it's giving us this little arrow toward the bottom that we can click to just continue. It's already paired the mouse and keyboard. I was expecting to have to plug them in via the lightning cable like I had to do with my Mac when I purchased these accessories separately. So that's pretty cool and convenient. I'm actually going to go through this on-screen setup here really quick and I'm going to be back once it's finished. All right, so here we are at the final screen. It simply says setting up your Mac and it should put us into OS 10.11 El Capitan soon. So as you can see, here we go. We have the regular wallpaper and our dock just appeared. So let's go ahead and click up at the top on the Apple menu, followed by about this Mac. And it does reveal that this is an iMac on 10.11 with the Retina 4K display, a late 2015 model with the 3.1 gigahertz Intel Core i5 processor, as well as eight gigabytes of RAM. And for the graphics, the integrated Intel Iris Pro 6200. Closing that quickly, I'm going to go into the App Store and we're going to download a couple of benchmark tools. All right, so here we are. We're going to start with what will undoubtedly be the most disappointing of the two, Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Now, what this will do is essentially write a file to the computer's hard drive and in turn read it to assess the read and write speeds. So once it opens up, we're going to close out of the app store here, which is the only other thing open, and we're actually going to run it. So let's go ahead and close it now and wait for it to open up. As you can see, it's still bouncing here in the dock. Now this is definitely the drawback of that 5400 RPM hard drive, guys. I would definitely recommend going with either the higher fusion drive because the lower one only has that 24 gigabytes of flash or just pure flash storage because this is incredibly slow. So let's go ahead and hit start here in the middle and prepare to be underwhelmed. So as you can see, we have a very, very disappointing write as well as a read speed here. We have 33 megabytes per second over on the right. It actually will probably go up during round two and 52.8 megabytes per second on the read. As you can see, we're now at 38.6 and closer to 70 megabytes per second. That's absolutely horrible. So as you can see here over on the will it work chart, pretty much nothing will work and this will be horrible if you're trying to do any sort of editing in 4K, which is pretty ironic actually, because this is of course a 4K display. Don't get me wrong, it looks absolutely amazing. It's just as stunning as the 5K 27 inch display. It looks so crisp and sharp. The detail is unprecedented here guys, really on the 5K though, because of course that is even one step beyond the 4K, especially since it's bigger. It's that 27 inch display. So I'm going to quickly open up a 4K image for you guys just so you can kind of get a feel for it. All right, so here we are inside of Safari. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit and I'm also going to zoom in on the Mac itself. So we're just going to use the command plus keys to actually zoom in on this image here. And you'll notice that hardly any detail is lost. This is absolutely amazing. This is even a little higher quality than a 4K image. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit just so you guys can see exactly where we stand here with this image and where we're actually 
actually zoomed into. So it does look truly amazing. It's really hard to get a sense for it unless you're actually here in person, but I can tell you guys that this display is incredible. I highly recommend going down to your local Apple store and checking it out if you can, if you're interested in the new 4K iMac. Now I know we kind of got sidetracked there for a second talking about the display, so let's get back to our benchmarks with Nova Bench before we actually wrap up this video here. So just like with Blackmagic, it's going to take a second to open. Now let's go ahead and hit start test here. Essentially what this does is it provides you with a numeric representation of your computer's overall power as well as its computing capabilities. So let's go ahead and let this run here. I'm actually going to speed it up. You'll also notice that I have nothing else open down below in the dock. We do not have any sort of open indicators on any of the icons there. So let's go ahead and wait for this. So I just finished and we do have a pretty measly score of 807. Now my personal recommendation is either go with the 27 inch version or if you're dead set on the 21.5 inch 4K iMac, then definitely bump up those specifications if you can when ordering this because you'll be much happier with your computer if you get the higher spec model than if you just go with the base configuration, which is what I have here. Now I really do hope you guys liked and enjoyed this video. And if you want a chance to win a brand new iPhone 6S from Apple, all you have to do is just navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of Mobile Safari and sign up. Once you do, just download any of the applications that appear in the main section for points. And once you do earn some points, then all you have to do is go to the fourth tab and you see that link there. Just take what appears after the equal symbol and post it in the comment section of the video I have linked for you guys on your screens now. It's that simple. That giveaway will conclude more toward the end of this month. Again, if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I create videos similar to this one, as well as unbox other Apple and Mac products, just be sure to click the subscribe button down below next to my channel name if you have yet to, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.